liked the book I mean I liked it okay I found a lot of it um very stuff I knew already like nothing was new to me or very few I think that for someone who's going through just like whoever said Sarah said about people that are going through this like active stress I I thought it was great that there was like actual physical things you could do instead of like you should feel this way like here's an exercise you can do and here's an exercise I didn't do any of them I don't really feel like I need to do any of them but I maybe at some point and I think there's a lot of people that read self-help and they're like you should you know this is this way that you should feel or maybe not should because I know self-help hates the word should but like the idea that you know, you, that there's something you can concretely do in mm -hmm. order to, you know, to the fix or to help or to whatever. I like that. I want to bring up the idea. This is what I talked about a bunch is the human giver syndrome whole thing. Oh was, yeah. I had, a I don't, I still don't know problem. how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. I just felt like they were sh they, they were like, you shouldn't be a human giver all the time. And, but, but all women are human givers. And if you're not a human giver, then you're not a real woman. Like every time they mm -hmm. referred to a human giver, they were trying to refer to women, but I don't feel like I'm a human, I don't have this human giver syndrome. So it's like, am I not a good enough woman because I don't want to give everything to everybody? But then they're like, you shouldn't do that. But then it's also all women are like that. And mm -hmm. I got to really- And by default, kind of if you're not a giver, then you must be a taker. It was very yes. like this, mm -hmm or this. And I was like, similarly, Lindsay, I was like, well, I have a husband actually who is a giver. And yeah. by default, I guess you would therefore classify me as a taker, but I do have moments of giving, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So I found it confusing as well. I wouldn't classify you as a taker. I don't wouldn't yeah. either. Oh, I totally think of myself as a take. That's oh, yeah. Crazy. I just want to suck it. All. I was like, "Why you want to pay attention to me?" I was like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, I don't think of myself as a giver or a taker. I feel well, like I didn't like that either, balance. Lindsay. Yeah. <clears throat> that the whole other, human yeah. giver syndrome. I'm like, because yeah. I don't know if that's a real syndrome. Like, yeah, no, it's not real. It's just not that black just and white. Pointed. I mean, maybe for some people. I think it would yeah, be your motivation. Not for all women are human givers all men are mm. human beings or whatever uh, yeah, oh, yeah we right. kind of back to the begin one of the beginning points that meredith you raised and it's actually spot on i think that this book is talking specifically to like their ideal reader is i think female a woman and it's a particular type who mm -hmm. most likely would identify with being like yeah i do suffer from human giver syndrome you know, and we're just not, I don't know, we're women filled with lots of complexities and nuances, you know, I think that's one connection point between all six of us is that we very rarely fall into like a, we are just this or just that. Well, I think that's true of all women. And that's maybe what the underlying problem with this book is, is that they try to find this very specific woman and maybe um, like all of us kind of was like, oh, like, that's kind of simplified. I wonder if many women who read this are also like, I'm more than what this is saying. Like, yeah, some of this applies and some of it doesn't, but there's so much more. Like, it's not just patriarchy <clears throat> and like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Book interrupted. Hey, just recording a little interruption of waiting for the internet to work so we can start recording this episode. Everybody's there. We're all waiting. Having a little internet issues, a little audio issues. We got Ginny with us today. There she is. Anyways, here's our interrupt. Here's my interruption. See you soon. On um, book interrupted. Well, would anyone recommend this book to anyone? Mm -hmm. I like the practical components. Um, yeah. And then the research that just supports that it's really important to work on those relationships with others. 
Yeah, I'd recommend it to certain people or as a, you know, an easy, uh, I didn't find it a difficult read. I know some of you did, but I, I flew through it. I thought it was, and you know, I think a lot, some, well, probably a lot of women would be, this would be useful to them. So I'd recommend it with, to some, what do we call it? Now we still don't remember what we call it with reservations, with, cavi- with, reservations, with whatever, wow. for certain people, I recommend mm-hmm. it. What about you, Sarah? Would you recommend it? I'm the same as Lindsay. Um, I would recommend it for anyone because personally, I'm just not in that place. But I, there was lots of things in it that I thought were uh, really beneficial. And I like, like Lindsay said, all the exercises. I also like that they gave more than one thing you could do. You know, in the exercises, yeah. it wasn't like do this one thing, meditate for an hour, and then you have such a hard time meditating that mm-hmm. you never do it. So you never have the thing that's supposed to help you and you're stressed out. It's like you can kiss, you can hug, you can do exercise, you can meditate, you could daydream. Like they give us like endless things that you could do to help yourself. So I would recommend it to anyone I I feel is in a situation where I could tell they're burnt out and maybe they're having health problems due to it and they don't know how to get out and they feel like, like I used to feel like being on some sort of crazy train I can't get off. So I would recommend to anyone that was feeling that way. I think it's a great book for that because it gave so many different things. And also if you're feeling like the patriarchy, uh, then it kind of (laughs) makes you feel better. Or if you're feeling like I can't go to work and always be smiling and happy and I don't have time to exercise or do yoga and I don't have I'm always the one cooking and cleaning like you're feeling like some of the people in the book then reading it could make you feel like you're not alone you know so yeah I would recommend to certain people but not to everyone do you think that um, Leah doesn't recommend it <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> <"Good> <laughs> for sure yeah she has good spoken yeah. um <laughs> what about you Meredith uh, oh, she's like back. Lindsay, like Lindsay, there wasn't like, oh, we can't hear you, Leah. We can't hear you. You're muted. So sorry. I'm going to sign out early because I can hear someone in our new house. Oh, oh my God. Okay, we'll see you in a bit. And I recommend yeah. the book. Oh, she recommends it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Don't be sorry. Like Lindsay, I don't think, I don't know if I learned anything new in the book. I like the, you know kiss somebody for a long time that's nice um I wouldn't recommend the book I really it was really tough uh really tough read for me and I didn't finish it it was just like every time I picked it up I just it felt like it was adding to my being like oh I gotta read this book and it was like the opposite it was burning me out no yeah (laughs) um (laughs) so I wouldn't I and I know it has some good tips in there and stuff but I I wouldn't recommend this book if there was an equivalent that was written differently maybe it was really, it was a really tough, really tough read for me, which is not unusual. It's not uh, typical of. I read lots of. Yeah. I mean, it was like reading Moby Dick. <laughs> the new, I've never finished Moby Dick. But when I pick it up, I'm like, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm just like, oh, I can't read about more whales. Like yeah. I haven't even met Moby Dick yet, and I have to put this book down again. Like the whale hasn't even surfaced, so I kind of felt like that. <laughs> Burnout. <laughs> Burnout is my Moby Dick. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So. Do you hear that, Nagoski sisters? <laughs> <laughs> they may be flattered. Oh, that's a classic. Ooh, <laughs> totally right. They're only flattered because they've never tried to read it. I'm just joking. But like, seriously, <laughs> pick it up one day and just be like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. Am I the last one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. I don't feel like I can recommend it because I didn't read it. Um, and if someone was presenting, in a way that I felt this book might help them. I might tell them about it, but I would also tell them I didn't read it, <laughs> which I guess wouldn't be a really glowing recommendation. No. <laughs> you might want to read this. I stopped, but maybe you can. Well, maybe it'll be maybe you're to you. it through. But you clearly need you it. Want. Or read Moby Dick. <laughs> yeah, I feel like how Meredith feels, which makes me feel better because I didn't know if I was going to be the only one, but I had a very similar experience to Meredith with it. So I don't know if I've been really conclusive in my recommendation or not but that's the end of it (laughs) um do you guys always think that like when you either like really loved the book or had a hard time with it that everyone's gonna feel the same and then it's never that i think opposite 
Yeah. Well, no, actually, if I love it, I think everyone will love it. And then surprise if nobody, if people don't like it, but when I don't like it, I think everyone's going to love it. And I'm going to be somehow insulting or weird or didn't get something out of the book that mm. everybody else got or something. Yeah. I worry about the being insulting, right? Yeah. Like, I don't want somebody to be like, oh, you didn't read my book because you don't like me or yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, no, it has nothing to do with that at all. I like yeah. everybody who is here. I yeah. don't like the authors. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, feel, I, say, I feel bad when I don't like a book for our club, but also if I don't like, generally, if I don't like a book, I always feel bad about it. Like somehow somebody worked That's hard funny. on this book and, yeah. Yeah. and I'm just like, I, feel bad. I don't like I it. do feel bad about that part for sure. I also just, yeah. I think, come to view like books. Sometimes I think that there are a lot like partners. Like, do you ever, have you ever like dated someone and you're like, I think it's about timing. So, so oftentimes in life, like the connection isn't just about the person or the book, but also who are you at this point in time? So 100%. some books, even too, I'm like, oh, this has spoken to me. And it makes a lot of sense. Why? Because of the themes are, that are going on in my life. But you could read it another time. I'd be like, that book sucks. Like I was ready for Clarissa Piccola Estes women. <laughs> Like I was ready for it. I don't know <laughs> that I would have fallen in love if I wasn't at that particular point in time. I, I couldn't agree more with you. I totally think that that's a huge uh, variable in how well a book lands with an individual for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of Untamed. This is when you guys are talking about this too, of like yeah. Kim was like, so just like, this is, this is the book. And a lot, a lot of us, well, I'm definitely me, obviously, really didn't like it. And so I think you were shocked. You're like, what do you mean? Like, yeah. what do you mean you don't like it? What? Yeah, let's talk about so some more. Yeah, which was interesting to see, like, the differences. I always like that, too. Of, you know, I think now that we've mm -hmm. done this for a while, I can kind of guess what everybody's going to think about a book. I think at the beginning, Ooh, it was let's more Let's add shocked. that as a feature. Lindsay like, we guesses make predictions. For everyone. <laughs> yeah. Everybody guesses for everyone. Mm. You know, like, I think... You, you, you finished. You, you, you like it. You, you, you don't. Did mm. you, who did you think was going to love it, Lindsay? Did you have an idea? Were you right this time? For this book? Yeah. Well, I figured Kara liked it because she picked it. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that Sarah might appreciate it, but I think that's kind of the similar because I felt like she went through that. I'm surprised that Mare didn't like it because I know you've been going through actual burnout. Yeah, I totally get burnout all the time. <laughs> yeah, like severe, yeah. severe burnout. So severe I feel burnout. like this, you really? might be able to find something in it. So that surprises me. Yeah. You know, I wasn't, Kim's always a wild card. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> I know, me too. I, I, know, I, like, I thought like it Kim too. would love this book. Mm. Um, I just thought you would like this book for some reason, yeah. but you're right. I should have realized with the stories, you don't like that spoon feeding yeah, yeah. fictional stories with the yeah. non-fiction book. I don't, I don't like think that they're fictional like, though. I think they're, yeah. they're totally, they think so they're real. fake names. They're composites of several people. So they're, they're based That's on what real they said, people. Yeah. Oh. But, but the numerous prequel. They're I don't using like the it as a tool. Either. Yeah. yeah. Just tell me the facts and yeah. I got the fact and I can move on. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't need you to like demonstrate how it, how it plays I like out. the story. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, they're yeah. cute. I like it too. I like I like, it. that's funny because I'll enjoy fiction when it's fiction. But if we're reading about like facts or data or whatever, you don't need to dress just it up facts, for me. man. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> give it to me with no underpants. <laughs> <laughs> no underpants. Just go read the Give research. me the data. Yeah. <laughs> No wonder. <laughs> I don't think we have a reference so the listeners will understand that. Just a sports bra, please. That might, give it yeah, to me, might. give it to me raw. <laughs> there you go, folks. The naked truth. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank the butt-ass naked truth. That's right. Mm -hmm. Don't dress it up with underpants. Is that better? <laughs> don't listeners. dress it up. We don't need to dress up that this clear? dress with underpants. <laughs> we don't need to dress up this vagina with underpants. Just give me... <laughs> Just give me a dress with no undies. <laughs> it's nice wearing a dress without underwear though, because it's so breezy. I love it. Like yeah. in the summer. Yeah. And and like risque. Yeah. Like it feels feel nice sexy. as well as it's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you feel sexy. Oh, I like, never ooh, wear underwear knows. at home. Like when oh, I'm yeah. at home and a dress. Oh, never. Forget it. No bra. Not no a bra, underwear. not underwear. No. Just a dress. You're oh, home. No, I always happy do. place. The only yeah. time I don't wear underwear is jammies. Like I'll wear a nighty without underwear, but 
No, I can. I, I've never gone out of the house without underwear. Ever. I don't think ever. Really? No. Never. Huh. No, never. Give it time, never. Sarah. Give <laughs> no. it time. I don't think she's going to change yeah, that. I don't think she'll it may or may not be no. a phase. Yeah, it, it would be a, a huge phase. accident if she left the house without it underwear. Would be a there's huge something accident. wrong. You know, there's she something waits wrong. Until she's 83. She's in a big rush. <laughs> to make she's a on big the way change. to the hospital, probably. <laughs> something has gone terribly wrong. Or the house is on fire. The house is on fire and she's still wearing her pajamas. There you go. There we go. That's the scenario. That's it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And even then she would have tried to make at least one or two attempts on her way out of the burning house to grab underwear. It's funny, actually, when you talk about that. So we get bread every day, fresh every day here, and you pay the baker for the month. So you just go get your bread and come back. And what I never go. <laughs> this is what, because I don't wondering. wear underwear in my jammies. Okay. But I will not leave the house in my jammies either, ever. So the Maybe because like, you don't have underpants on. I'm like, I do not go outside without, with my jammies on because I don't have underwear, I bet. Wow. Mm. That's unacceptable. Standard. You're too exposed. Be outside with my jammies. <laughs> Interesting. I, love, I just like the visual of you talking about going to the baker. And I was like, I like the start of the story. And I wanted to imagine how underwear fit into the bakery story. Ooh, I can think you of know? disgusting oh, I my kids. Right? I was like, okay, no, I, send, I send my kids to go get the bread because I went or without underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You don't have to answer that. We don't want to embarrass the children. Okay, on I need if you've enjoyed these video highlights, listen to the full episode on our YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. Remember to like and subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when new episodes are published. Find out more by going to www.bookinterrupted.com. Never forget, every child matters.